Hi, this is Bill Dickerson. Welcome to another exciting episode of LDI TV. This one's on the future of dentistry. What is the future of dentistry? At the IEPA annual meeting this year, which is also the 20 year anniversary of LDI, we will be having a panel of distinguished leaders of the profession moderated by me that are talking about the future of our profession. They are, in no particular order, Dr. Gordon Christensen, founder of Clinical Research Associates. Dr. Craig Yarborough, who is the Associate Dean for Institutional Advancement at UOP School of Dentistry. Dr. Ron Jackson, leader in the profession and adhesive expert. And Dr. Omar Reed, pioneer of the patient-centered practice and LVI's philosophical model. So what are the important issues of the future? With the rise of corporate dentistry and the increasing prevalence of group practices, is it going to be hard for the solo practitioner to compete? What action should be taken in order to do so? The ADA commissioned a diagnosis of the emerging trends, and the report found 12 emerging trends that affect the future of our profession. One, the population is getting older and more diverse, leading to different disease patterns, care-seeking behavior, and ability to pay. Two, consumers are becoming more astute purchasers of healthcare and seeking value for their spending. Three, an increasing number of dentists are being trained, but mounting debt load and changing demographics are altering the practice choices for the new dentist. Four, pressures are growing for an expanded dental team to provide preventive and restorative services. Five, Care is being integrated within patient-centered medical homes in medicine, but there has been a slow take-up of dental care services. Six, payment for dental series is shifting from commercial dental insurance to public coverage and personal out-of-pocket payments. Seven, commercial dental plans are increasingly using more selective networks, demanding increased accountability through data and performance measures, and pressuring providers to reduce costs. Eight, the Affordable Care Act pa pediatric dental benefits will provide millions of additional children with dental coverage through small group and individual markets and optional Medicaid expansions. Nine, public programs with a growing number of participants will demand increased accountability from dental providers. Ten, with the increased demand for a value in dental care spending, practices will need to become more efficient. Eleven, the trend towards larger multi-size practices will continue, driven by dental plan pressures for smaller provider networks, practice patterns of new dentists, and increased competition for patients. 12. Healthcare reform and medical expansions with an increasing emphasis on outcomes and cost effectiveness will encourage alternative models of dental care. Are they correct? It is important for every dentist to understand what is happening so they can create their own future instead of being swept up by the changing forces. Ignoring them may mean letting others determine your future. By 2020, all of the baby boomers, people born from 1946 to 1964, will be in the older population. Those older than 65 will shift from 13% of the population in 2010 to 19% by 2030. Is this good or bad? Well, unlike their parents, most of them will have kept their teeth and will remain active dental patients. And since Medicare does not cover most dental procedures, there will be an increase in out-of-pocket expenses. With less personal cost responsibility, college kids, etc., does this mean they will be more apt to finally have the treatment done they've always wanted? Will the Gen Xers, as well as those children born since 2000, who will need less dental care, expect lower costs due to the society becoming entitled? Will the Affordable Care Act create children who become adults believe it's the government's responsibility to take care of their teeth? Is dental care for the children just a precursor to government coverage of adults? Will this mean that want-based dentistry, as espoused at LVI, becomes even more important for the future of your practice? Other statistics may play a role in the future of your practice. The population is also shifting to the Sunbelt area of Florida and the Southwest, and growing at twice the rate of the rest of the national average. In the last decade, fewer adults are visiting a dentist regularly, but more kids are. The severity of dental decay has declined, so what effect might that have on the services you provide? Will the emergence of social media be the main driver of referral sources? What about the fact that 37% of Americans would consider traveling abroad for medical and dental care? Will we see more Mexican border towns popping up with competitive dental clinics? There are many unknowns in the Affordable Care Act, and it's hard to predict its long-term effect. How many will enroll? What will it cover? And will the adults soon be covered? There is no doubt our profession is in a period of serious transformation. Many believe this to be a critical moment in dentistry and not a time for complacency. So our illustrious panel of experts will give you their views and predictions of what lies ahead for our profession, what we can do to make sure our practices are more solvent and profitable, what can us as a group do to help steer the profession in the right direction. Are we doomed or is there hope? I'm as excited as anyone to hear the differing opinions of these experts of our field. I hope you'll join me at this year's IAPA meeting in Las Vegas, October 22nd through the 24th. Thanks for watching this episode of LVI TV. We'll see you next time.